guys welcome back to the shop getting ready to start our next project here and uh, what this is is a uh, this is going to be a collaboration with uh, Doug Jackson over at SV Seeker a lot of you guys might know who that is he's got a YouTube channel there called SV Seeker where for the past several years I know five six years or so he's been showing a, uh, a boat that he's been building from the ground up from complete scratch from the ground up and it's been uh, one heck of a project to follow along with and and see it uh, you know come to life there and Doug tries to do everything he can himself and he's this has been sort of a a um, a journey of learning how to do things as as he's been moving forward with this build so he uh, anything he needs to do he researches and he learns and tries to take care of himself and I believe the same thing goes for metal casting I know he's been doing a lot of metal casting for a lot of different components of this boat and these are two parts that he cast here himself out of some brass or uh, it might be some kind of bronze I don't know the exact alloy uh, so we'll just call them bronze but these are capstans also known out there in the boating world as cat heads and we used to get these in the shop whenever uh, me and dad you know worked together at the old shop uh, we used to get parts like this in from the uh, shrimp boats the commercial fishing boats and these right here are going to be used for the anchor winch on the uh, sv seeker that doug is building and so he cast these himself and all he needs done is the keyway broached inside there for the for the keyway these are the keys that he sent along with them uh, these are 7 16 wide. These are Woodruff keys, and I don't know the story behind why he's using Woodruff keys. Uh, maybe he salvaged some shafts that he is going to be using uh, for these keys right there. So what we need to do is just broach the 7 16 key in this bore in both of these uh, to fit the uh, Woodruff keys there. All right. The bores are already on size. I, I cleaned these out and measured them. They're measuring 2 and 7 16 and so these are already finished right there these are finished as cast and uh, no final machining on the boards so what we're going to be doing is machining a broach plug that is going to slip down in this bore that will accept the 7 16 broach right there all right that's one that i don't have so we're going to custom make one for this this is about seven inch long so we'll make a seven inch broach plug we'll have to mill the slot in it to accept this 7 16 key right here or uh you know broach cutter and then we will go to the, we're going to use my electric crankshaft press to do the job here and I broke this. This, uh, this would be an excellent job for the Davis key seater. And the only problem that I have with uh, using Davis key seater is that I actually don't have any of the tooling needed to uh, hold the cutter inside there. I've got to make a base plate and I got to make some plugs that, that I can use on the, uh, on the Davis for properly holding the key um, the, the brooch on center so we're going to use the press to get this done and we'll go find a piece of stock cut it off and we're going to make us a custom brooch plug and then go to the mill and start milling our slot all right i found a piece of cold rolled that i had right up here in my uh, material rack this is a piece that was left over from uh, the old shop days right there this is a piece of two and 15 sixteenths actually yeah two and 15 sixteenths 10 18 coal roll so this is going to be our broach plug i got it measured out just over eight inches and we're going to go ahead and cut that piece off i don't know if i've ever talked about the saw probably years ago this is a dual model c4 it's been modified and uh, this was something that i bought from motion industries a long time ago it was it was an extra saw they had that they weren't using so i uh, bought it from them it's been uh, upgraded to uh, you know this pneumatic cylinder right here actually it's a hydraulic cylinder but it's manually operated is, is what i was trying to say uh, a couple parts that's been missing off of it i need to i need to build the stop rod that bolts here that comes down and hits the cutoff switch i've never done that so anytime the stock the uh, stock is uh, you know done cutting i just reach over and hit stop all right so we go ahead and start it up right there we've got our new mk morse saw blade on here and then we just come over here and release the cylinder. And we'll get this sucker cut off. Same thing with the uh, coolant tank. That was missing with the saw as well. So I've always used that five gallon bucket there. And it just, it just drains right back into the bucket back there on the back of the saw. 
but it it does a good it does a good job. I didn't pay a lot of money for this saw, and um, I built that that little stand for it with the caster, so I can just move it around wherever I want to. We've got our workpiece already uh, set up here in the Monarch lathe. Uh, I went to my six jaw, went ahead and faced it, put the center in there, faced this side, just makes it a little quicker, but I want to use a Monarch to do the turning. So we've got to take a half inch off this total. I'm going to use my LNMX tool to take 400 thousandths off there. We'll do that in two passes, see how that looks. And then we'll go to a CNMG tool to uh, get our finish on there. So I'm assuming that this is 1018 cold rolled. It was cutting almost like it was uh, 1144, but I'm not sure. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take two... 225 thousandths cuts with a 20 thousandths feed rate. I'm not going to use coolant just so that I can show you the uh, chip forming action here. Let's see how we look. Pretty sure that's going to be 1018 cold roll that we're that we're cutting there. We're going to go ahead and run our coolant on this pass here. Help protect our uh, new tool, our new insert. Swapped over to the CNMG tool. We're just going to finish this out. I had 40 thousandths to come off there. Make a 20 thou pass here and then uh, just take what's left on the uh, second pass. Not a critical dimension. I'm just going to have a slip fit inside that bore. Four thirty five, four thirty five, and four thirty five. We got about maybe a half dial taper right in there. That's good. I wanted to give it about two thousandths uh, slip fit down in there. And by the way, I'm wearing this glove here because I, I had a little cut on the end of my finger when I was I was flicking a chip off the end of this tool right there, and it, it, it was stuck right to the end. And when I did it, it just cut my finger and it's just dripping blood so I had to wrap it up and put it in something we're just going to uh, chamfer that in right here kick it around give it a little bit more angle there just like that all right we are ready to uh, take this to the mill and start milling our slot in it 
All right, just doing our uh, little test fit here. So this one has got a tight spot down in the bore. It goes down right there and stops. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look in there off camera. There might be a little spot in there that I can flap with a flap disc and try to uh, get that little high spot out of the bore. Okay. This one over here is fitting just like it should. The bore of these are actually a little bit tapered. So on one end, it's really close to size. Drop it in there, but. This one's perfectly fine right there. Another option that I could do is maybe take the plug and on this end right here, just relieve it a few more thousandths just up to that, wherever that high spot is and it'll slip past that. So, but anyways, I'm gonna take care of that off camera. We'll get that fitting. Um, next thing you're gonna see, we're gonna go to the mill and probably gonna use the horizontal setup and we'll use a uh, milling cutter to come in there and uh, cut this slot out of there for our approach cutter right there so it'll slide down through there I know I said I wasn't gonna uh, show you doing this but I, I thought I would point this out right there I, I'm gonna use this drum sander right here to uh, try to flap this ID out I got about a couple thousandths in one spot I need to get and uh, this drum sanding kit I, I got this and the uh, cartridge roll kit from um, KVC tools two or three months ago I got this kit because Every time I'd come into a situation like this, I just got tired of not having the stuff that I needed. So I went ahead and just bought this uh, whole kit right here. Uh, brand name is uh, Klesco. But yeah, I got that and the uh, cartridge roll kit from Superior Abrasives from KBC. I got a bunch of different abrasives, uh, stuff that I didn't have anymore that I was running out of and just got a nice assortment of abrasives though. So I thought I'd share that. So we're going to go ahead and give this... Uh, drum will a, a try <laughs> definitely making a chip in there I'll just keep doing that until we get our get our plug to fit it's trying to go in there so we got a couple high spots in there I think it'll go now. This was the side that was tight. I think we can probably just take the, uh, we'll just go ahead and try it. I'm going to take my rawhide. Where's it at? I've got to find that first. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You could just bump it in there. All right, so at least we know we got it. We got it fitting in there now. All right. Let's see if I can bump it out. <laughs> 